just exile the Vrishens permanently. So, it's a meta call. It's a cool deck. It's it's certainly a meta call because there are people trying to mess around with Ancestral. So, it was pretty neat that he was able to exile my Thopter Foundry permanently. But yeah, these are the four cards I would consider. Either one of these split cards, well, fused cards technically, a Vidillion Click, or maybe a Crumble for the Manlands. I kind of like the Crumble because the Manlands are awkward. Like, my Sweepers will answer his board state really nicely, but the Manlands could just be the thing that get us. Crumble also lets me see how he's sideboarded, so it has that synergy. Let's jam. It may have been correct to just make an army of Thopters there instead of going for the Snap Bolt on the Displacer, by the way. Because if he had just spent his turn displacing... Oh, this is sweet. And this counters the... Uh, the Yeah. So we can snare the um, the Tide Hollow and then we can follow up with an Anger of the Gods. So this is actually a really sweet hand. We need to get Red Source on both of these. Now, since I have planes, it's very tempting to just go like... Um, okay, turn one Temple means he's setting up to just turn to the... Uh, um, believe it or not, he could just turn to the, uh, that's pretty gross. He could just be turn twoing a Thought Knot Seer, which is disgusting. And that is what he is doing. I actually need to take Foundry here, I think. It's a little awkward, but I need to be able to path the Thought Knot Seer. What sucks about this interaction is we'll draw the card first if he stacks this properly. We drew a land though, so it doesn't matter. He'll take the Snapcaster Mage, I assume. Maybe he takes Anger though. I would take Snapcaster Mage. takes the spell snare uh oh but next turn i have snap snare oh well, no i don't it's exiled okay so he wants to scholar me i think is what's happening i don't really want to show that i've drawn a flooded strand so we'll just play the steam sulfur falls excuse me rest in peace Okay. I could, like, snap path my own snap here just to get a blue source. I don't need to do that, though. And this is another Thought Nuts here. Seems fair. Okay. Card seems perfectly fair. <laughs> no, I mean, the card, the card is actually balanced. It's just when you add the fast mana to it, it's less so. He takes my Helix. Okay. Not that I'm complaining, I think I think that they made the right call with the Eldrazi Temple, but or the uh, the Eye of Ugin, but anyways, Resto seems pretty good. No need to hide the flooded strand. I mean, for all I know, we're about to top deck a Kiki Jiki and just win after this Angel, so seems good. So you don't worry about it. Alright, so Kiki Jiki off the top, please. We have enough red. That's not good, Trix. Speaking of not good, we can only take this a couple more turns. The Thought Nuts here.
I have most of my lists on Facebook and or Twitter, uh, A2B3. All right, Kiki off the top wins, unless he's got, like, a dismember. I think what I was supposed to do there is actually anger to get him to burn the Burrington, and then I could, like, snap bolt the Thought Knots here. Only I'm realizing that a little bit too late. I mean, Sweeper, Cryptic off the top is live. What else is live? Strangler. That wins right here because he can strangle the Snapcaster Mage. Nice. Good games. He says, Beck call seems sweet, and I said thanks. I told him good luck with the rest of his league. Solak says, he wouldn't blow the forge tender. He could wait till I finished the burn, so I didn't do anything wrong. It doesn't make me feel any better, though. It sucks that we lost. Oh, well. That's probably going to be good against me in the GP, too. Like, the fact that they can just exile visions naturally. I mean, obviously, I have alternative ways to cast it. Just like the Grixis decks in the formats do. They run, you know, they can discard it, and then you can Dark Dwellers it. In my case, I just Brain in a Jar it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, the deck, just being able to naturally fight vision seems bad for us. So, I'm not going to say that's why we lost. Oh, it's a bad matchup. Like, no, I hear that all the time. I don't believe in that crap. I think you do have a chance to win every matchup if the cards line up right and your plays line up right or your opponent makes a mistake. I think there's the possibility, you know, I mean, obviously there's some polarized examples. You can look back in, like, Legacy, for example. You know, you have the old turn one combo decks versus decks that don't interact, but no, you don't, you don't just chalk it up to, oh, this is unwinnable. Never, never do that, you know? That doesn't make any sense to me when people say things like that, but I think it's a tough matchup. And we have the tools to win it. Yeah, I think like Cryptics into Verdicts would win. Uh, an Anger that could have gone off. Yeah. Game 1, he had a lot of disruption. He did. He was able to pick apart what I was trying to set up. He was able to remove the Thopter Sword combo. He was able to take the Beck. We got the Beck back and then he took it again, so... Anyway. We'll see how the next match goes. See if it's, uh... See if your opponent has a little less main deck ancestral hate. <laughs> Jeez. Strangler's sweet. I like that meta call a lot. I like that meta call a lot. The, uh... The Stranglers for removing ancestrals. I like that a lot. Oh, we got an opponent. Seems good against us, anyway. The whole main deck be able to remove ancestral. Because you need those to go off. In those grindy matches, you need them to go off, so... Him being able to remove those seems very not good for us. Hopefully you guys appreciate that about my stream. I've had people say that they like that I don't get too terribly salty, so. J-Bone and I were joking the other day. There's nothing worse than watching a salty streamer, so. 
Really, it, it takes a lot more than me losing a match or a whole league for me to stop enjoying a brew. For example, if we're up against another guy that's got main deck Ancestral Hate, we're in trouble because this hand is built around Ancestral. For example, I can only cast these. I can't cast Snap or the other. We definitely keep though. We're on the draw. Solak says, how does Ancestral get cast off of Brain? I'm sorry, I'm dumb. No, you're not dumb, Solox. I'm literally, we literally do things on this stream all the time, Solox, that other people just don't think of. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of different ways to, and, and you guys can help, like, some people have really helped me flesh out those ideas, which is great. I think I'm actually supposed to lead Hollowed. I know you might be sitting there like, well, wait, why would you ever do that? Because we have more red sources in the deck, and I'd rather turn on the path um and half of the helix and then draw naturally into the red source we're more likely to hit a red source than i would a white source that's why i've decided to go about it that way according says bouncer sacrifice the jar in response to putting the first counter well you don't actually put the first counter on it you actually just you put the brain ability on the stack and you hold control and before the counter even goes on the brain you sacrifice or you bounce it so it counts as as having zero charge counters and vision of course is cmc zero so we drew a foundry. Um, he could be... I'm already below... If he's shift, I'm already like screwed for that. Why don't I just go ahead and shock again? Like If he's shift, I'm already screwed for that. Might as well just shock again. Might as well. I'm assuming he's shift if he hasn't played a threat yet. Because that doesn't say infect at all. I'll see you, Venom. <laughs> Have a good one, friend. Yeah, it definitely looks like shift to me. Looks like shift to me. Let's chuck a bolt up there. I added more bolt... Uh, more burn back into the deck, so I have the ability to just go upstairs against certain archetypes, which is good. Basically, anytime they don't have creatures that I need to be actively burning, I'm just going to send it upstairs. I get pretty aggressive. Alright, we'll pass it. We're hoping to find a land drop. We're hoping that one of these visions can go off before he goes to combo. Muddle can trade with escape shift, which is nice, but I'll need more than that. So he's on the bring to light variant. Alright, Tribe. Let's put him to 13 here with a Helix. Fast tap here, a little bit of Helix action. So like says, I saw you stream a week or two ago and Snap bought Brain in a Jar and Beck Call. It's been coming back ever since. Oh cool, Solax. I'm glad you like the show. He definitely has a counter spell, by the way. Did you see the way that he just stared at that helix? He kind of stared at it for a while, so. Another helix, Sigo. Mono helixes is not going to win this matchup for us. We're going to need to do more than just mono helixes. Now, if he goes for escape shift and then I go for a helix, that's a thing, but. Path is also widely dead. We'll see if he wants to counter the Helix this time. I doubt it. He probably wants to counter this Evision that's coming off. Ideally, I draw a blue source that I can have Muddle. Alright, is it Charm? Nope, but that could screw us over later. How's it going, Just Another Magic Monday? Alright, there's that remand we were worried about. By the way, when it comes to scapeshift, there's no difference between 18 and 16, just the way the math shapes up. If he goes...